All right, so now that this is dry, we can go ahead and start with the second part of the paint. Um, just a side note, acrylics are so great because if you don't like how anything turned out, you can go ahead and fix it and paint over it. It's a lot easier to fix your mistakes than it is with working with watercolor. So if you're unhappy with anything right now, you can go ahead and fix it before we move on to the next step. What we're going to start out today are these clouds. So we're going to want to dry brush these clouds on. Remember when we're dry brushing, we always work with a flat brush. Since the clouds are pretty small, I'm going to use my medium flat brush. And what I'm first going to do is dry brush on this lighter color and then dry brush on this darker color underneath to give the sense of a shadow like the clouds are more 3D. So we're going to start out with some white. If we use just pure white, it's going to be too bright, so we want to dull it down a little bit. So we're going to use a tiny bit of black, tiny bit of blue, and a tiny bit of violet. And these are the same colors we'll be using for our shadows later on as well. So it's mostly white, which is the top tiniest, tiniest, tiniest little dot. These other colors. Again, we can always add more, but it's hard to go back and fix it if we accidentally add too much. So just adding the tiniest dot of color at a time, just so we're getting a nice light, extremely light gray, blue violet color. A lot of times you can compare it on top of your painting too because colors will look different on top of the white palette versus against the blue sky. So once I have that, I'm gonna use my dry brushing technique. So I wanna wipe off the majority of the paint with my paper towel. And I can start kind of painting on sideways to get that thin edge of the cloud and then I can use more of a scrubbing motion from the corner of my brush where I want to get this cloud fluffier. So you'll see it's semi-solid in the middle, but we have this nice fluffy edge where there's barely any paint going down, where it's just sticking on top of the little bumps and not going deep into the crevices. So I'll repeat that process wipe off a bunch of my paint. I want different size clouds so some can be smaller. You'll hear this kind of scrubbing sound from the texture of the stucco medium. in the middle is a little bit more solid. We want the edges to be nice and fluffy and dry brushy. And in nature, we want odd numbers of things, so I can keep three clouds if I want, or I can go to five clouds, and so we can have some that are cut off on the edges here. Coming from either behind the mountain or on top of the mountain. So odd numbers always look more natural, even numbers look like it's too kind of set up. So what an odd number of clouds. Then we can go ahead and use the same mixture and just make it a little bit darker. So I'm adding some more black. It's starting to dry up on me, so I actually need a little bit more white too. And a little more blue more violet. Oops. 
looks like a pretty good color. And then again, I'm gonna do the same dry brush technique where I wipe most of the paint off on my paper towel first. And then I'm just gonna lightly use the corner of the brush and scrub back and forth on the underneath side of the cloud. that shadow. So this should have a nice fluffy fuzzy effect to it. It shouldn't be solid. If it looks too solid then you have too much paint on your paintbrush and you need to wipe more off on your paper towel. can go ahead and wash and dry our brush. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to paint our zebras. So you can see that this color is too bright of a white. So we want to mix a just a duller color to, to paint the zebras an off-white color. You're going to want mostly white. some burnt umber and a tiny bit of yellow so again we just want to tint the white very slightly so I'm just dipping the very very corner of my brush getting the smallest dot of paint on it I can always add more, but it's hard to go back and fix it if I accidentally add too much. So we just kind of want a light tan cream color. So that looks nice. And then you can go ahead and paint the entire zebras. So just make sure that when you're painting them, you're smoothing out your paint so it doesn't dry bumpy. After you're done painting your zebras, you're going to need to let them dry. So you can either let them air dry or use a blow dryer. And the next step is to paint the stripes on them. The stripes are just black. And whenever we add fine details, we want to thin down our paint a little bit. So I'm going to be using my baby red brush and I'm just bringing a few drops of water on my palette. So you can see how I'm turning this very liquidy. It's not too liquidy, it's not runny, it's not see-through, but it'll thin it down enough so when we do all of these stripes and add the little detail, we can get nice thin brush strokes. So I wanna press thin and then I can go ahead and press thicker in some areas. When you're doing the details on the zebra too, we don't want to forget the hair on the back of the zebra's neck. And you don't want to forget their tails either. So when you're doing the zebras too, you want to do some curved stripes. Notice how the legs have a little bit of a curve to them. And this will give our zebra contour lines, which helps them look rounder. So I'll let you guys go ahead and finish that. You can look at this or your original reference picture that you traced to know where to put the zebra stripes. After your zebra stripes are all dry, which again, you can blow dry them if you need to, we're going to do a glazing technique to add a little bit of a shadow to the zebra to show our light source and to make it look more 3D. So again, our light source is coming from the left-hand side here. So it's hitting the top and the left-hand side of the zebra. So that means the right-hand side and the underside of the zebra is going to be a little bit more in shadow. 
So how we can do that is with some matte medium. So we just need the tiniest bit of matte medium since we're doing a small area. And then we wanna mix a shadow color. So I'm going to use my burnt umber again. And I'm going to add a tiny bit of violet. And then I'm going to thin it down with my matte medium. And again, I'm gonna add the shadows on the right hand side or the underside of the zebra. So when you do this, again, the white has to be dry, the black has to be dry. This is all dry first. And the matte medium just made my shadow color a little bit more see-through. So I just wanna do a small area at a time. And then I wipe my brush. I can use a little bit more matte medium, make a second color that's even thinner. And this will help me blend it out so it's not that harsh line. And then if I need to, I can again wipe my paintbrush, take a little bit of pure matte medium, and continue to blend it out even more. So this will give my shadow a nice see-through appearance. So again, we're just doing small little parts at a time, otherwise the matte medium will dry too fast and we won't be able to get it to be a nice smooth blend. So I wanna make sure to do it on the right hand side of all the legs and the underside of the belly. I could do it to these back zebras too. So we'll get a little shadow where the neck is. And then the right hand side of the legs and the underside of the belly. Since this zebra is fully in front of this zebra, we can tint it a little bit more and create a cast shadow from the zebra onto this zebra. And this will help it stand out in front a little bit more. I'm gonna add that cast shadow first. Blend that out. So since it's a little darker, it'll look further back in the distance. And I'm gonna continue with the shadows on the right hand side and the underside of all the features. There we go. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. The very last step we need to do is add some more of this grass detail. So I've added it everywhere, but we especially wanna add it on the horizon line here. So it looks like our zebras are in the grass a little bit more. So we're gonna go ahead and mix that wheat color. So as a reminder, that was burnt umber and yellow and white. And we can add a tiny bit of burnt sienna as well. That looks pretty accurate. And then I'm going to use my baby red brush to do this detail. Again, I'm going to dip it in water and add a few little drops of water to this so this will thin it down and I'll be able to get smaller, more detailed brush strokes if the paint's a little thinner. So I can 
we'll go ahead and I'm just pressing very lightly. So I'm adding these little detailed lines, again, crisscrossing them over. So some are slanted to the left, some are slanted to the right. to redip my brush every like three to five brush strokes since her brush is so tiny it doesn't hold a lot of paint so this is something that just takes a lot of time and patience and then if you have any parts in your painting where the texture medium wasn't working so great or you want to add even more detail again we can make bigger brush strokes in the foreground and we can have them getting smaller and smaller as we go farther back into space so if your ground is just looking a little too dark there's not enough texture, we can go ahead and paint in more detail that way. So you can see on this finished product how many lines I went in throughout the whole painting and added more detail. And once you finish up the grass, you are done with your painting. So again, with acrylic, you can go back and fix anything you're not happy with, uh, repaint over it before you go ahead and turn it in.